Everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Place of Finding Classic After Earth Plus. We're at 10 wins in a row, and we navigated some treacherous eddies. Is that what they're called? <laughs> WLK8, EQ, KG, KG. The dinosaurs were freaking ogling this thing. Um, sorry, that's uncut gems. I'm not gonna apologize, it's a great movie. Tears down. I was talking about uncut, I mean, I saw uncut gems maybe back in January. Um, I was talking about it in chat today, even though it's May. May something. I don't want you to know the, <laughs> the backlog. Hey, it's still May 1st. Anyway, someone was like, I would see it, but I don't support Adam Sandler anymore. I'm like, yeah, nobody does. And by nobody, I mean like, you know, only tens of millions of people on average. But, like, the movie is really good, and he's like a really good in it. If you don't support Adam Sandler, because he largely makes, like, crap movies, that's very rational. However, this movie is actually, like, it's better than good. It's like, in my opinion, it's sublime. Highly recommended. Apparently it's not on American Netflix yet. If you're American and that sounds unfair, welcome to the rest of the world with every other media property ever made. Okay, sorry, except some animes. Except for some animes. As a Canadian, you just get used to the fact that if something's made in America, sometimes it will be on Canadian TV, like immediately. But sometimes it's like, hey, we got a great movie. It's coming to theaters in New York and Los Angeles, and then in Chicago, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C. Um, you know, moves, moves to, I've got a couple theaters in Seattle, a couple theaters in Portland, some Floridian cities, and then uh, it's on VHS tape. Okay, I'm dating myself a little bit there, but... Or like, hey, enjoy this awesome clip of Jon Stewart owning somebody, and uh, this clip is not available in your country. All I'm saying is... Welcome to the freaking show. We shouldn't have even taken that pill. That's, that's an example of doing the little things wrong. We have another very important choice. And I think the choice is... That you take Incubus... Early. And this is a very dangerous setup, don't get me wrong. Um, but I think... Oh, we didn't even have to use bombs here. I forgot we had Sulfuric Tears. But Incubus is good enough... Without a doubt, to... You know, really, you could pin your whole run on Incubus. It's like building a team around somebody in the NBA, you know? Is it LeBron James? No, it's not LeBron James. But, you know, is it... Uh, Kyle Lowry? Yeah. You can't maybe build, uh, you know, you can't pin your franchise hopes and dreams exclusively on Kyle Lowry. You know, you're going to need a, a compliment giving cast surrounding it in order to in order to make the dream work. But, you, you know, I mean, he's a pretty good power shooting guard. I don't know basketball. I do know Kyle Lowry, though. Because every time I hear his name, I think about Martin Lawrence pretending to be uh, Will Smith in Bad Boys. Yeah, because I'm Mike Lowry. Yeah. It's a lot like that. Or maybe, was that Will Smith pretending to be Martin Lawrence? Look, I've only seen Bad Boys like two times, so. Don't, don't shoot the messenger. I think we do want Blank Card instead of Yum Heart, which is largely not worth anything for us right now. Um, oh, so good and tasty. That's pretty solid. And we got two free item rooms coming up. Um, free in the sense that we don't need to use keys on them. But... For my own peace of mind, some tinted rocks would be quite advantageous right now. Just to make sure that we can preserve a certain level of HP moving forward. I'm sure it's not... It'll come as no surprise to you that that's, you know, high on the list of things that I'd like to see. Anyway, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm always surprised. Like, I'd t I've gotten at least 10 tweets over the last six months. And that's a long time scale, but work with me on this one. That are like, I finally saw Parasite, thanks to your recommendation. I would never have heard about it without you, so thanks for talking about it. That is always surprising for me. And I'm going to talk about 2019 movies a little bit here. But it's always surprising to me, because I'm like, it won Best Picture. It admittedly had not won Best Picture at the time that I saw it. It was merely universally beloved. Except by that one guy on Twitter, who was like, I don't know how to read. But, 
That's not fair. You can enjoy the movie, um, or you could, you could dislike the movie for other reasons, I'm sure. Than specifically being illiterate, but that seems to be the most common one. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Um, well, we kind of got a, a, oh, careful, a big fat bowl of nothing here, but that's okay. It's kind of okay. The speed is a little bit dangerous, to be honest. But I think if we play our cards right, we should be we should be fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, first off, I appreciate it. Don't get me wrong. But it's just it's one of those comments where I'm like, you can't let that one go to your head. You're like, yeah, I do have the best taste in movies. Were it not for me, nobody would have heard about the most important foreign language film of the last decade. You know, obviously people were aware of that in advance. We should have played the fortune teller. That's the little thing we did wrong there. And we know that that is the... Um, and we should have taken the, the shiny rock, but we knew that that was um, the tower, so we didn't even need to peep that. <sighs> I think you gotta take it. But I'll level with you. We're putting a lot of risk on this run right now. If we get another good item that carries a negative um, in terms of our own safety, like this one carries a negative for our own safety because we have to get closer to enemies, but if we get another good item that has like a, a, a speed down attached to it, for example, we might not be able to take it. But I think we're, we're still hanging on like the razor's edge here, and, and we got enough uh, hurting power to not really be too nervous. Oh, that's a trinket we would definitely prefer to glimmering rock regardless. But anyway, I'm, I still maintain. I don't know if I have a, a top five best movies of 2020, although I did see a lot. Um, I saw a lot in theaters last year. But I'll tell you, I, I, I pull Avengers Endgame out of the list just because I almost can't even see it as a movie. It's more like... Like, it's not fair. There's so much emotional manipulation in that film if you were along for the Marvel ride, which I know not everybody was, but... You know, that it's like, it's, it's almost... <laughs> Forgive me for this overblown thing, but it's like someone coming out of like a really jazzed church service or something. They're like, what'd you think about it? They're like, it was a court, a court what do you mean? What did I think about it? It was the greatest thing ever made. No Krampus, please? I think we have to take it, and then we enjoy the speed upgrade and the ability to fly, and we find ourselves in a very familiar situation. Um... That's that's very nice and finding the, the other secret room extremely nice as well. We're definitely we're taking risks, but these are at least in my opinion right now, these are calculated risks. We can't afford to get a bad trip pill, so we'll just be content with whatever we get here. By the way, I've recognized I've been so distracted by my own survival, I haven't even used uh Let's go. Oh, let's go. We I'm sorry, high priestess, but that you're not the you're not for real. I don't want to make you. I don't even have a. I don't have any punchline for that. Ooh, that's all I got. Okay, hold on. So anyway, I, I don't think I I can because I'm like oh it's a 500 out of 10. You know, but what are my favorite movies of uh, of 2019? Number one is still Parasite without a doubt. Number two, Uncut Gems. Number three, Midsummer. All three of those movies had a real impact on me. Number four, I would say, is Ryan Johnson's Who Done It Knives Out. I had, um, I mean, Algis is really good here too. I had a very good time watching it. However, it didn't leave like a lasting impact on me. I just found it merely extremely enjoyable. Number five, to be honest, I might say is is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I thought that was. At the time that I saw it, I was like, I'm kind of confused uh, by what I'm supposed to feel about this movie. And then I saw it a second time on TV recently, and I was like, oh, it's just like a, a really fun and, dare I even say, pleasant ride. Okay, here's what you do. You dip lope, you double. Yes. You grab blank card and nine volts. Then, you blow this up. If there's a spacebar item you're interested in, or not interested in, rather. Okay, we just want that. I want that. 
Name that movie. That's right, sports fans. It's Napoleon Dynamite. Um, we don't have 22 cents. But we can kind of finesse it here. You know what I mean? I just want a little bit more money. If we can get to 15 cents, we can get one more stat bonus out of this. And I really think that's going to take us into the stratosphere. We're going a not really slow. We're going a little slow right now. But I think all of our, all of our problems are going to melt away. If we even have problems right now. Um, they're going to melt away once we get the stat bonus from this shop. I hope. We could get a bunch of, you know, shot speed ups exclusively. It's pretty unlikely, and even that would carry some benefit for us, but... But yeah, that's my favorite movies of 2019. I haven't seen The Lighthouse yet. I think that I expect to like The Lighthouse, which means that I'll probably like it. Because <laughs> I'm going in going like, I heard this is amazing. But uh, other honorable mentions? I don't know. It's been a while. I haven't thought about it. I didn't come in prepared for this episode. What I will say is what I always say about this series of movies. I thought John Wick 3 was the best John Wick. Uh, and I, I think 1 is extremely good. And I think 2 is very great. I think 3 is even better. And I, I respect them for cranking the envelope up to ridiculous levels. And I think when people go, it's unrealistic. I'm like, Halle Berry having a heat-seeking murder dog is really no more unrealistic than John Wick murdering 10,000 dudes in the first movie. That's my personal take on it. I appreciate the speed and the damage on that. Um, and you know what? I think we're... <sighs> you know. You know it's a real humdinger when we're going to be taking algaes instead of black rune. And that's... Oh, I'm costanza right now. Whatever I normally do, I'm doing the opposite. But I, I always, I, the action movie defender has logged on. That's me. I'm always the guy who tries to pick fights with faux intellectuals who are like, you know, implicitly believe action movies have less merit because of the fact that they're fun instead of boring. Um, it's not completely fair. And yet at the same time, I'm a self-described uh, snob. I know, it's like a weird thing. I'm like the worst kind of insufferable movie fan. It's like, oh, I really love... Ingmar Bergman's oeuvre, but also, I'm a huge fan of Crank, High Voltage. They're like, we get it. You're in your 30s and you have a beard. I just, I don't have a beard, I just haven't shaved, okay? There's a difference. I'm a once a week shaver. I have been considering moving to a twice a week shaver. And I'll, it's, it's not fair. God is cruel. Because of the fact that I have... A high amount of, and this is not me saying my T count is high, but because of the fact I have a high amount of free testosterone, a chiral form of testosterone that leads to simultaneous head hair loss or crown hair loss, but also body hair growth. Um, the hair on my, my face and, you know, my shoulders and the back of my neck grows very fast. Um, and the hair on my head doesn't grow at all. So... I, uh, I don't mind having a beard. That's okay, but I if you give me the choice between having a beard and not having a beard, I prefer not having a beard. I think it looks a little better, but I don't really care um, because I think it feels way worse and I'm like itchy all the time and I'm not like a beard dude. You know, I'm not like an r slash beard. Wow, look at this dude's beard. Nice beard, bro. I'm not like one of those guys. What a majestic beard by Odin's hammer. Look at that beard. I'm not like that, you know, really. Um, so, I've been shaving like once a week, but the older I get, the faster the hair in the really unsightly areas grows. It grows on the back of my neck faster than it grows like almost anywhere else on my body. And that's a bad look to have a front and a back beard. So you might say there's an obvious solution. This it, People are not going to like this, by the way. But I don't think Pyromaniac does enough for us with our current Red Heart situation. That's going to be a spicy one. People are going to be... They're going to be riled up in the streets over that one. But anyway. Now the obvious solution is why not just shave the back of your neck. You know, your ear line, etc, etc. More frequently. But grow the beard on the front. It's really... It's because I don't want a beard. 
which is what I should have just said in the first place. But like once a week beard was like the perfect fit for me for like a decade. At the end of the week, people are like, oh, you growing a beard? And I'm like, nah. And then I come in on Monday and they're like, oh, you look different. You get a haircut? And I'm like, I get it, I'm bald. And they're like, yeah, we know you shaved. Anyway, get to work. Um, but now I think I gotta become a twice a week shaver. Even though it'll take roughly twice as long, which is like really going from 10 minutes a week to 20 minutes a week, to be honest. It's, it's pretty low maintenance. Um, I've resisted it for a long time because I'm a low maintenance kind of guy. But I think it might be time to go up to a double, a double shave weekly. I'm also, I, I want to be clear on the beard thing. I'm definitely not one of those guys. I feel like guys like what I'm about to say should be the majority just based on common sense but i appear to never meet them probably because they're so normal they're not talking about beards all the time but um if i really feel like in the beard camp there's like two guys there's like one guy who grew a beard instead of a personality and is like constantly stroking his beard no offense by the way if this if i mean if you feel like this is taking a shot directly at you then that's cause for introspection not lashing out um I'm definitely not one of those guys where I'm like, can't you tell I'm a nerd? I have a beard. However, I'm also not one of those guys who's like, look at that guy's beard. He would never cut it in the Marine Corps. Back when I was in the Marine Corps, if you had a... Sarge would have chewed you out and spit you out like a old piece of tobacco. You know, I'm not one of those... Like, there's an NHL executive who famously won't let rookies grow facial hair. Um, you know, rookies are people who are in their first year on the team. Uh, or first year in the league, I should say. Um, he won't let rookies grow facial hair because they haven't earned it yet. Which is just like, what year is it? Now, does it work? I have... I mean, no! Obviously, it does... Here's the thing. He has a history of, of you know, putting together some great teams. But I've never heard an interview, interview where they're like, oh yeah, like, Martin Brodeur, Bobby Holik, they were really good for us that year. However, the thing that really brought the team together was we never let anybody grow facial hair. It's just one of those things where you're like, you know, he appears to be a capable executive, and also he's got some weird superstitions. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. So I'm just, I'm, I would say that it's fair to suggest I'm kind of like beard agnostic, you know? For me, I don't like a beard. I de I mean, on me, I should say. And I like how it looks, but I don't like the way it feels. So I'm sacrificing, you know, a visage play for a little bit of personal comfort um but there are definitely dudes that i see and i'm like when they shave their beard i'm like you shouldn't have shaved that i don't tell them that i go looking great king keep it up but you know in private if they're like hey what do you think about me without the beard i'd be like honestly it's kind of weird to see i would i think you should go back to the beard but you do you if they're like i'm gonna keep it this way i'd be like obviously you look like a star who is this am i look am i looking at my friend from high school, or is this Ryan Reynolds? I can't tell. I can tell. <laughs> Everybody can tell, but you gotta gas him up a little. Hold on, are we on? I was just, ooh, I hit Q accidentally. That's mildly devastating, because um, Alge's is really good. But let's be realistic. We've kind of, I mean, that's, that's doing a little thing wrong, but it's doing a little thing wrong due to the fact that I just made a little... I fat-fingered it, you know? It's nothing to, you know, it's just the slip of the... It's a slip of the wrist and I'm on the way... Is that how that song goes? Just a twist of the lips and... Just a kiss on the lips and I'm on a ride. It is definitely not just a slip of the wrist. Which I don't even think makes any sense. You think Britney Spears songwriters would allow incoherence like that to fly? I must confess that my loneliness is thrilling. Thrilling me now? It doesn't even make any sense. Get back in the lab, Roger. We're trying to make a hit here, not a piece of garbage. Okay, well, I mean, like, this is probably some of the easiest money ever made. And Strength actually did some amazing work for us there, so I'll take it. Alright, what the heck have I been talking about? I've been in like a, a fugue state for the whole episode so far. It's a very... It's, it's one of the fastest runs we're going to have that's going to miss Boss Rush still. 
Like, our damage potential is actually kind of disgusting. 5 rate of fire, 12 damage is, is comically good. Essentially, in some ways, we have infinite bombs because of the sulfuric tears. We were, like, merely a couple of floors ago, we were in Spice Town. And you know what? We deviated from Spice Town and found ourselves in Pleasant Valley. That's, that's got to be a real town name. Pleasant Valley. Sorry, there's a very loud rumbling outside of my window. One of the, uh, It's a game I like to play in the Pacific Northwest. It's called Earthquake. Or Big Truck. That was Big Truck. Oh, you know what? I'm looking... It's actually Motorcycle. So we should be playing... Earthquake. Or Small... P he almost said it. I'm joking! Now I got the beard guys and the motorcycle guys angry at me? Come on. It's a joke, sweetheart. Look it up. I don't really care to do boss rush. I know, it's a new era. If we had a teleport card, I would rush it, but instead, usually what I do is go, we gotta get to boss rush, and then I walk in, and I look at like Polyphemus and go, nope, nothing good in here, so let's recognize our own idiocy. There's really no logical reason to rush down boss rush if we're not gonna do it for a great item to begin with. So all we would wanna do is maybe get a teleport card and then, you know, teleport out, but. If we're not going to worry about it, then let's not worry about it. Anyway, it's still Friday over here. Honestly, like, I'm in a real groove of, of recording uh, Isaac today. I'm having a good time. I recorded some Eden today that went extremely well as well. Um, I got to still do some Northern Lion tries. But, like, I the Northern Lion tries, like, you can almost... I, I'm of two minds. I, I structured my day... Intelligently sometimes. What I try to do is put the most focus-heavy work. I don't think we take it. It's so weird to be in a position where I'm actually doing this, but I think it only hurts us to take it. It, it only... It, it has way more potential to hurt us than help us, is what I'm trying to say. But anyway, lately, I, I almost feel like... Like, Isaac, when I really think about it, it's the easiest video to record in the sense that I don't have to ever think about what I'm going to say. And I don't have to, you know, choose what game to play. You just boot it up and, you know, you're starting in media res. You know, we're on win 11 or whatever. Talk about that in context. That'll kickstart some kind of chain of wisdom in your brain or pseudo wisdom at least. And then you kind of, you're off to the races, right? But in a way, it's almost like the hardest video I record because there's nothing, or very little at least, still in the game to mine for commentary. Whereas Northern Lion Tries is like the exact opposite. It's like I, I don't even need to be entertaining at all in a Northern Lion Tries. Although definitely I do see different results in the video quality by bringing like different attitudes to the video. Um, eh, I don't think it's worth it for us. The juice ain't worth the squeeze there. But, uh, you know, the video almost kind of makes itself. You turn it on, you go through the tutorial, you do like a couple of real rounds or levels, and then you're like, oh, I'm done already. So, you can save a Northern Lion tries for the end sometimes, and, you know, you, when you're in a groove with Isaac, I think it's good to let it ride. I, I go through these, like, fits and spurts. So we shoot money sometimes, but the money tiers do a lot of damage. And also, if the money tier kills an enemy, we get money? Yeah, okay. I mean, we, we can't be killed. I'll just, I'll give it to you straight. With nine lives, uh, the only thing at this point that could, and this is me being completely honest, the only thing that could realistically kill us is accidentally walking into a reroll room, then the reroll room being bad, and then dying nine plus times. So, it's... <laughs> It's somewhat unlikely. It, it's unlikely enough that I'm actually like, yeah, let's take Guppy's hairball, even though that's only going to be our second Guppy item and our chances of becoming Guppy are super low. I think it's, it's still like the right play. No? I just, I mean, what value does a red heart give us? 
slightly more HP, but it's not taking us from one to two. It's taking us from, you know, well, <laughs> eight and a half to nine and a half now. Um, but it also takes away permanent Polaroid invincibility, which I'm, I'm not eager to, to acquiesce to, honestly. But yeah, what are, what are my plans for, for Saturday, tomorrow? Honestly, um, we've been doing like a lot of home improvement stuff recently with what we're able to do with the quarantine, but we got like a little home garden started. Um, I built like a little garden table yesterday and a couple of weeks ago, as mentioned, I built like this charcoal grill. Just spending some time outside. You know that the quarantine's been going on like a long time when even someone like me who's like, you know, when I see, like, I, is it, people are, let me recognize I'm not ignorant to the fact of how this is going to sound, but let me say it anyway. The smart thing to do would be to not say this because it's going to make people somewhat annoyed and it's going to sound maybe even like a humble brag but i'm going to say it anyway just to be true to myself sometimes increasingly rarely because i've said no too many times but like a publisher will be like hey we're announcing our new video game in you know cyprus we'll pay for your airfare you know your hotel your food and you'll get to get a little footage of this game that you can show off on your youtube channel in exchange for being part of our marketing machine what do you say and increasingly i'm like uh, does Cyprus have my couch and bed? I don't think so. Decline. I'm like, I do like traveling, but like, I, I like traveling kind of like on my own terms. It's, it's a luxury, don't get me wrong. I like traveling on my own terms, and I definitely like, at first in like 2012, when I was just kind of coming up instead of going down, I would, uh, say yes to everything. And I thought maybe I'd be one of those guys who's like, I'm on a business trip. And they're like, you know, I'm in Vegas on a business trip. I'm in, uh, you know, Mexico on a business trip. You know, I see those guys on planes all the time. They're they're in their mid fifties. They're wearing like a, an Oracle backpack and stuff like that. And they're constantly sunburnt, but also like you can, they're, they're always on a phone call at the gate at the airport. That's like blue sky thinking. They're, they're, I, I, I hear the phrase blue sky thinking from these guys anytime I'm at an airport gate. Blue sky thinking, how quickly could we get the team together to get some synergistic output on this issue? In a perfect world. You know what? Let, well, this is on productive. Let's circle back to this in two weeks, okay? Just, just take a look at my calendar and pick a time. Um, anyway. I thought maybe I'd be one of those guys. Those guys seem like they're having fun. Um, you know, they get to travel a lot. Sometimes they even get to sit at the front of the plane where the airline attendants are nice to you. I know, wouldn't that be nice? Instead of being treated like cattle at the back. Excuse me, sir. Could you take your headphones out? In case the plane crashes, you can't be listening to music while you explode in a giant fireball. That might be the funniest thing I've ever said. I'm just calling it right there. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's my vote for my favorite thing I've said this week, at least. But then, like, I did it for a bit, and I was like, this isn't for me. I'm like, I'm traveling a lot, I'm tired, I don't smell as good as I would like. I'm jet-lagged, and then, like, what do I get out of it? Uh, I get to post the trailer for, like, you know, the new X game on my channel. You know, it's not for me. If, if that's for you... By all means, you know, I, you, you got to know yourself. For me, I'm like, a, I, in, I get a lot out of being away. Like, if Kate and I take like a week or two and we, we get away from the computers, you know, travel to, I mean, we like, even in January, we took like, well, it's kind of funny that I'm treating this like this is a, like a long weekend thing, but, you know, we, we took like four days and we went uh, to Whistler, you know, which is like a, you know, ski and snowboard kind of mountain resort. Um, but, you know, they, I, I get a lot out of that. But at the same time, like, traveling for work for me is really counterproductive because my work is not, you know, announcing new video games. My work is, like, being at home uh, making videos and entertaining people. So what would happen is I would, like, work really hard before I left so that I wouldn't miss out on, you know, any of the work stream. 
And then while I was gone, I was like 50% working, 50% relaxing. And then when I came back, I had like a backlog of work that had to be done because I was recently away. So it was really like taking a vacation from work to work, which led to more work when I came back. I'm a big fan of my couch in bed. I, I love I love the sleep. I love staying in. And genuinely, you know, I just like I like spending low key time at home watching trash TV that irritates people. Anyway, this run is off the off the chain. And it didn't always look like that. There there were I mean, for a 28-minute run, it didn't go through too many waves, but there was at least a little time. That Incubus play, that could have changed the entire dynamic of this run. Gwyneth Paltrow sliding doors. Anyway, for now, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, and I'm going to assume if you watched 30 minutes and 43 seconds up to this point that you did enjoy the episode, click the like button. It's free, and it sends a message to YouTube. Hey, this guy makes good content. Show his content to more people. It sends a message to me. Hey, you people like this content. Make more content, and these people will continue to watch it. Apart from that, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more in the future, and I'll be in the comments. See you next time. See ya!